Hi, this is Mr. Warden. Here's a quick key for the do now today. Do now number 14.1, week 14, day one. Um, so you roll a 12-sided die two times. The first time you get a 5, which was a 1 in 12 probability, of course. The second time you roll the dice, what is the probability of rolling a 5? Well, here's the thing. The second die roll isn't affected by the first die roll, so the probability is still 1 in 12. A different question would be what is the chance of getting a 5 two times in a row? That would be a 1 in 12 times 1 in 12 chance. That would have been a 1 in 4, 144 chance. But since the second roll isn't affected, they are completely independent events, uh, and I'm only focusing on the second roll, the probability is 1 in 12. So the P of 5 on what's called a D12 for 12-sided die equals 1 in 12 because B events are independent. Okay, If I wanted two fives in a row, then that's a compound probability and the probability probability of five then five on d12 would equal one over 12 times one over 12 which would equal one over 144 and by the way <clears throat> the probability of getting a five on one roll or a five on the other roll uh, would end up being two twelfths. You would add them if it's an or probability. But this is just an independent event, so it ends up being a simple probability. Simple means one event, a one-off event. Uh, compound probability is when two or more events has to have to happen. So if you roll the dice, would you consider it independent? Again, is it independent or dependent? Now, I've already kind of addressed that. Uh, each roll of the die is independent, okay, because they do not affect each other. Consider uh, the local store uh, sells a winning lottery ticket the next day. And they post an advertisement that someone won $10,000 in this store. The next day, a whole bunch of people go in to buy the tickets, thinking that this store is the one that will win another ticket because, uh, you know, they already won a ticket there. So the next, you know, the probability must be good for getting another winning ticket. Well, it turns out there is no real mathematical change. In fact, there may be a reduction in probability of winning another ticket there because more people are going in and so you may be diluting the probability so you may end up having less chance of winning a ticket. Um, let's see. If you draw cards, but those events are independent. That's the key thing. They don't affect each other. If you draw cards from a deck and replace them and shuffle after each card you drew, do new results depend on previous results, or are they independent? Well, they are independent because it's the same number of cards um, in the deck, and uh, and you've randomized it again by shuffling it. So they are independent events. If you drew cards from the deck and do not replace them after each sh uh, and shuffle after each card, actually, let's go ahead and shuffle them. But if you do not, and I'm going to edit this, uh, but if you do not replace them, that's the key thing. If you do not replace them, uh, now you've shrunk the deck. So the probability changes because the total number of possibilities has changed. Uh, so that makes them dependent events. Those are dependent events because each new event depends on changes that have happened from the previous event. All right, so hopefully folks are starting to come up with ideas with your prop for your probability carnival. And today we'll start uh, talking about compound probabilities and how to tell the difference between dependent events and independent events and um, those uh, pesky questions about whether the order matters or does not matter. All right, I hope this helped.